uh, we'd like to uh, formally and officially welcome you to the April luncheon for the Princeton Regional Chamber of Commerce. We have a, a wonderful program on today, uh, but as is customary, we'd like to start the event off, uh, convene the meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, so if you please stand. Uh, thank you. Please be seated. As is we uh, like to do, we want to uh, give special recognition to our Platinum Sustaining Sponsors. Uh, these are the organizations who provide the uh, largest single support uh, to our organization, and, and without them, we couldn't do a number of the uh, events that we do do. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention, and I'll turn the uh, program over to Peter Crowley. And now, for the key part of why everybody's here, Barbara, you want to come up and introduce our speaker? Barbara Fox. Here in Princeton, we are halfway between Philadelphia and New York, and that's great if you are looking for a job. If you're trying to position yourself in the media market or listen to the radio, maybe not so much. Whatever you think about what Governor Christie, how he X'd out NJN, it's done. And our speaker today has the will and the power to help us out. So let's welcome Bill Morazzo, CEO of WHY. Thank you ever so much for that introduction. I want to take a couple of seconds, burn a few moments, uh, certainly to thank uh, Peter, uh, you and the, the Chamber for uh, the very gracious uh, way that you have supported my colleagues and, and uh, my, myself. We are here to talk about public media, but you really can't talk about public media without talking about, more generally, the media landscape. And the way we like to think about it at WHYY is, is that if uh, one thing stays the same for those of us in the media business, it's change. 170 million of them, about half of us, use public media on a regular basis as sources of information, access to cultural and creative expression, and a way in which their children can learn in a, in a safe environment. So Governor Christie uh, is uh, not the first, and he isn't going to be the last elected official uh, certainly not at the state level, who has elected to get uh, his good government out of the public media business. Some people who might characterize themselves as fiscal conservatives feel that the nation's tax dollars uh, should not be used for anything other than essential services for our nation. So you may agree, you may disagree with Governor Christie's initiative. What we're left with as people who appreciate public media is that it's critically important, perhaps more so than ever before, for every citizen of this nation to have access to a source of information that can be trusted, that can inform, and can help them become more productive and engaged citizens of our great nation, of our great state, and of our great community. It's an easy way for people to learn arts and culture in their communities and in our nation. Most of those users of public media uh, appreciate the art form known as discovery, right? Learn something that they hadn't learned or knew about before, particularly as it relates to American history. <clears throat> Anybody here ever watch Ken Burns' Civil War series? It's a great expression. He said to me recently, Bill, I just don't get it. We're living in a 900-channel TV world, and there's absolutely nothing to watch but <laughs> public television. He's a great businessman, isn't he? So the state still technically owns all of the television assets, but did, under the authority of the legislation passed by your uh, Congress in Trenton, uh, the governor got permission to outsource the day-to-day -day management of NJN TV to a new media company, which was formed as a subsidiary of WNET out of New York City, now being branded as NJTV. WHYY sought and won the bid for owning five of the radio stations through South Jersey, for us, strategically speaking, including three up and down the barrier islands of New Jersey that gave us, for the first time, broadcast reach with 91 FM from Cape May Point uh, all the way up through uh, North uh, 
of uh, Mount Hockett. Mm -hmm. Several of you have asked me already today, what did we pay for those assets? Let me give you the, the thumbnail sketch of it. All up, those five stations cost us $1.5 million. Uh, and we will continue to morph and change along with technology. But those fundamental principles of what public media represents relative to commercial media, I can commit to you, will, will not change at all. It's content that's exceedingly well balanced that offers not just our children or our grandchildren, but any person of any age, a safe haven in which they can learn. You as a community have responded uh, quite wonderfully to this strategy. Let me first tell you that uh, uh, the Princeton zip codes that we follow uh, represent the single biggest base of support for WHYY. Uh, so I Thank you, and I commend you, and I congratulate you for making such a great philanthropic choice. Uh, when, you, when you elect to use WHYY, when you elect in particular to support WHYY, whether it be in the form of a, of a contribution or in the form of a sponsorship, uh, our membership roles are growing not only positively year over year, but we're outperforming uh, all of the big market players in our industry, whether you look at WGBH, WNET, uh, KCET in Los Angeles, uh, we're about 12 to 1,500 basis points better uh, than our peer group in terms of growth of, of uh, membership. That may sound like a simple thing, but go back to that Ken Burns observation. If each of us has something like 900 plus TV, radio, internet channel choices, to work off of, to spend what few minutes we've got left in our personal lives, when you choose a service from WHYY and then elect to support it, we view that as a business matter, as an incredibly good sign that we've penetrated a very complicated marketplace with a service that resonates so well with you that you are inclined to support it. Uh, so it's at that point uh, where I get to thank uh, all of you who have an interest in public media, especially those of you who have elected to support this service, because it is, as we say, nothing without you. Well, thank you ever so much for your attention. And now, Melissa, can you come up and give our April Champion for Business Award? Um, it's my privilege to introduce Basil Giletto from A1 Limousine, this month's Princeton Regional Chamber of Commerce Champion for Business. Come accept your award. Trenton Thunder is opening night. We have tickets direct from, from Patience Purdy over to Trenton Thunder. We really appreciate that. We have two sets of, two sets of four. Two sets of four tonight. We have lots of friends. So someone's going to be bringing, who's going to be bringing? J. Robin Hillier is going to bring three friends <laughs> to the Trenton Thunder game tonight. <laughs> and Madeline, thank you, who just won the gift, has two tickets to the Junior League of Greater Princeton, the Showhouse Tour. Okay, on April 22nd, going to that will be from WHYY Bill. <laughs> Thank you all, as I always do. This chamber is because of your support is where it is. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Drive carefully. See you all there. I am Aileen Formblad from Eden Autism Services. We've been members of the chambers for years, and it's a great, great resource for our organization. It's a really great relationship that we've uh, found. And actually, at the end of this month, on April 24th, we're going to be hosting at our brand new um, autism school, which we recently opened, a um, business after business chamber event. Uh, my name is Hi. I'm with the Courtyard in Princeton. This is uh, the chamber stuff. for a great opportunity to meet new people, to get out there, get your name out there. So uh, it's definitely it's been worth it. I met so many interesting people since I've been there, so it's definitely a positive event to go to. Hi, my name is Anita Haft, and I'm director of development at the Stony Brook Mill Stone Watershed. This is the best resource for anybody who wants to spread the word about anything in this county. This is an amazing organization, and I'm thrilled to be here. My name is Maurice Gallimidi, and I'm with Allegra Print and Imaging. I've uh, been a member since seven or eight years now, I find it very beneficial. I've made a lot of contacts. I think the easiest way to make this kind of organization work is to not center on yourself. If you see somebody that may that has a particular business issue, you may not be able to help them, but you can find them somebody else who can. 